Rick Hart took his charisma, he dedicated it to God, he returned the gift to God, and he gave his great gift to all of us. This was a man for whom ideas were a passion, and, a, and passions could become ideas, and passions and ideas could become stone. The way in which his fingers connected to his heart and his head, and I have no clue where that gift came from, except from God. Rick Hart's public sculptures testifies we are a great people a spiritual people yearning for new directions. We'll remember him as the artist, the pivotal artist that changed one of these heroes like Degas Manet were, uh, who changed Western culture. Well, I think Frederick Hart's work represents hope. It represents enlightenment. It represents uh, our hopes, our dreams, our cares. He was a man who set out as a young man. He literally looked around at what the contemporary art establishment was doing and said, I, I've come to the realization what my mission is on, on Earth. It is to change the course of art and to create works that touch people's hearts. I made up my mind very early on that I wanted to, that my goal in life, my ambition in life, was to change the course of art to bring it back to those great classical traditions of beauty and moral value. Rick's commitment to public art was one of the most profound dimensions of who he was and what he cared about not only with the cathedral, but also with the Vietnam Veterans Memorial and all of the other pieces that he does. They are not simply private pieces. Ex Nilo refers to the whole community of man, even though they are sort of very similar figures, and they are only eight figures. But they're meant to work as a choreograph group to express the awakening of the group or the community of man. All of my work has been defined by this one work, basically. Even the, the three soldiers, they are facing as figures the great unknowingness of the mystery of death in looking at the wall. was intrigued to see what he could do with materials that simply weren't available to sculptures of earlier centuries. And he was fascinated with the way that the clear acrylic actually absorbed light and light became a part of the sculpture. He called it sculpting with light so that rather than bouncing off the surface, it helped define the forms. The idea of having things emerge out of nothingness became especially exciting in a poetic sense in the acrylic because it, with the acrylic I could do it literally of things emerging out of light and nothingness or returning to light and nothingness. And that's one of the goals of Rick's work is to create a community of human beings that enfold the work and live out of the work of art. It's why The Daughters of Odessa, for me, is one of the most beautiful pieces. The Daughters of Odessa came about because of my interest in Russian history. And was originally, I did a small sketch several years ago based on the four daughters of Nicholas, who were all lovely young women, and were particularly uh, young women of great grace and character. Uh, they suffered a lot during the First World War, and they saw a lot of the uh, tragedy of life very early. And then they experienced it themselves as victims of the revolution. 
So I did a little study of them uh, several years ago and, and I developed it into something larger than just those four lives. It's meant as an allegorical tribute to all of the innocent victims of the 20th century. I believe that now at the turn of this century, the cultural tides are changing. And I believe a hundred years from now that people will come to the Washington National Cathedral and the Vietnam Memorial and they will stand before those works and realize that this was one of the great masters of all time. A hundred years from now, he will be recognized as the artist on this hinge that swung things open or led a new cultural paradigm. Today, uh, Rick is greatly appreciated. He will be even more greatly appreciated in the years to come. I think it's only now that we have reached the first anniversary of his departure that people have begun to realize what a great loss this, this was. This was a friend that we were proud to own, noble and simple and as deep as stone. And what of those who've lost his powerful hand? Let it so be that he has left his heart. In art, more cleansing to the eye than tears, to the next hundred and next thousand years. Let it so be that he has left his heart.